Hey everybody, how's it going? So I had a particularly good Saturday. I hope you had a good Saturday. I met up with a makerspace. I've been meeting up at several makerspaces over the past few weeks because I would like for a pair preservation group, not action fund, just normal repair preservation group, to issue a grant so that we could do more workshops like the workshop you saw here. I'm limited in what I can do in my store because I have employees going there all day. It's about 2,000 square feet. I actually do need to use this place to make money so that I could pay my rent and everything else. And I can cannot in any way, shape, or form as the director of a 501c3 use that money in any way, shape, or form that is a conflict of interest with my current business. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this workshop that we did and I would like to move it to a makerspace that has no affiliation with me and find instructors for it. What we did here is we set up a bunch of tables with my Brossman Repair Group inks, soldering equipment and stuff, and we allowed people to work on my donor boards. If you brought in stuff like a CB radio that you messed up and ripped a bunch of components off of, we tried to you know fix it or show you how to fix it. If you ripped a pad off of your MacBook board, I think David over here was showing you how to solder a jumper wire so that you could, you know, solder the uh, the fuse onto that after you rip the pad off. All sorts of really cool stuff. And uh, this place really seemed to be in line with my values, our values, and it also seemed to be a place where we could have some pretty cool workshops, whether it's basics phone repair. Here's how you take the screen out of an iPhone 10 or 12 without breaking it or cracking it. Here's how you replace your battery without blowing stuff up. To here's how you micro solder. I think it would be really fun. And I'm finalizing the details of that. And over the next few months, I should be able to announce some in-person workshops. My goal is to be able to keep these free to the end user. Even if I'm not able to work out how to make that happen in my store, I am going to figure out how to make it work out of some place. And I'm really happy that I met someplace today. So today I would like to just go over a little bit of this article and give you some thoughts. This is from Science Magazine, and it has a title, and I'm just kind of curious what you all think with regards to whether or not this is a grim warning or not. So it says, a grim warning from Israel. Vaccination blunts but does not defeat Delta. It says, now is a critical time. Israeli Minister of Health said as the 56-year-old got a COVID-19 booster shot on August 13th. The day his country became the first nation to offer a third dose of the vaccine to people as young as age 50. We're in a race against the pandemic. Now, there's one particular line here that makes me wonder if this is truly a grim warning or not when I dig into the math, and I'm kind of curious what you all think. So it says here, what is clear is that the breakthrough cases are not the rare event the term implies. As of August 15th, 514 Israelis were hospitalized with severe or critical COVID-19, a 31% increase from just four days earlier. Of the 514, 59% were fully vaccinated. Of the vaccinated, 87% were 60 or older. So let's just dig into the math there. So Israel has a rate, I believe, of somewhere around 78% of people above the age of 12 that have been fully vaccinated. So both doses of the vaccine. And you have 514 people that were hospitalized with severe critical COVID. So let's just take a look at the numbers there. So 59% were fully vaccinated. That's 303. 13% of them were under the age of 60. So what that means is that you have a country that has over 9 million people that reopened several months ago to where you can go out and eat, you can go work at, an, at your office, you can go to whatever aisle of the store you want to go in, not just the aisles that Gretchen Whitmer allows you to. You could pretty much do, for the most part, as you please for several months now. And in the, in the country of over 9 million people under the age of 60, you have 39 hospitalizations. Now, if you're looking at it, from the idea that this vaccine should be 100% effective, it should be able to prevent anybody from having symptoms, anybody from going to the hospital under any circumstances, that kind of sucks. If you're looking at it from the standpoint of, is this good to the, that it reduced hospitalizations to that degree? I think that's great. Again, you have a country of over 9 million people, and you have... 39 people under the age of 60 that were vaccinated that ended up in the hospital. Not even that died, that ended up in the hospital. That number, while not perfect, doesn't seem like a horrible number. When you look at the amount of people that are in the country, and we're not even talking about deaths at this point, we're talking about hospitalizations. Not all of those hospitalizations are necessarily going to result in death. 
So if you take a look at what happened in New York City over the past few years, we have an approximately similar population, I believe around 8.5 or 8.6 million. This is from New York City Department of Health. You can see the death count from people that were in this group, not hospitalization, but death count prior to vaccine. Here you have people that uh, had pre-existing conditions, did not have pre-existing conditions. You can get kind of get an idea of the distribution of it. It does seem better. Not perfect, but considerably better. And I see here at the end of the article, it says boosters are unlikely to tame a Delta surge on their own. Even if you get two thirds of those 60 plus boosts, it's just going to give us another week, maybe two weeks until our hospitals are flooded. He says it's also critical to vaccinate those who still haven't received their first or second doses. And to return to the masking and social distancing, Israel thought it left behind, but it begins to run to reinstate. Aaron's message for the United States and other wealthier nations considering boosters is stark. Do not think that boosters are the solution. Now, I think this is really going to depend on whether or not this is an exponential surge over the next couple of weeks. So when you take a look at Israel's cases, Google has this really cool kind of COVID tracker over here. I could just put that on the screen, you could see that there they have been trending up and up and up. And since the August 15th that they pointed out in this article, it trended up and now is kind of starting to level out over here. If that winds up going back down, I'm kind of curious what you all think here. You have under 40 people that were under the age of 60 in a country of 9 million people that for the most part for several months was virtually fully reopened that were hospitalized. I think that having anybody be hospitalized for anything is horrible. But when you're looking at it in terms of numbers, in terms of statistics, when they say it's a grim warning, yeah, the hospital may be overrun to some extent, but the idea that the vaccine is not doing its job at all, in my opinion, is just not warranted. Is it perfect? No. Is it reducing the rate of hospitalization to a considerable degree? When you take those numbers and you break it down, yes, I think it is. I think the data show that that is the case. Maybe I'm being a vaccine fanboy here. As I said in my other videos, I got the Moderna one, not Pfizer. But for me, looking at, the, that, at those numbers, that doesn't sound as grim to me. And what is interesting here is if this is not the way out, if they say that this is not a solution, what is? I'm not saying that I'm happy that people are being hospitalized, but I am curious, what is? We've had lockdowns, we've had, we've had restrictions there, we've had lockdowns there, we have vaccines. If I think the only thing that we can do at this point, or the only thing that I can imagine going forward at this point, is either A, 100% vaccination plus extended lockdown, which I don't think people are going to go for, or B, a uh, kind of piddle paddling along with half measures, half restrictions, or C, accepting that things will be as they will be, you, you're not going to be able to control a virus and getting on with life. Those are really appear to be the three things that you can do. Go for a full vaccination and full restrictions, have a bunch of half measures that kind of but don't really fully do the job, and or just go back to normal. And the reason that I'm kind of more looking at C is if vaccines are, if vac if vaccines are not perfect and you still can be hospitalized, but that's considered grim when the number of people under 60 that were fully vaccinated that ended up in the hospital in a nation of 9.3 million people is, 30, is under 40, then that means that we're probably never going to go back. I don't want to never go back. I don't know. Can I be honest there? Like, I, I don't want to never go back to the semblance of a, of a normal life. And I kind of, you know, over the past year and a half, I wore masks in my store, mandated masks in my store. I uh, didn't really socialize or go out to parties. Not that I fucking do that anyway. I haven't really done much. Um, but yeah, I started doing those workshops in the store that you see here at the end of July. That was about two months after I received the second dose of the Moderna vaccine. At that point, everybody had a chance to get this vaccine. And uh, I said at that point, that was my line. You know, a month or two after I've gotten this, once everybody else had the chance to get it, 
that I was going to do uh, just go back to some semblance of a normal life. I am not going to go in a hospital, go into the sick ward and cough on grandma. But if people that are under the age of 30 and 40 mostly want to come and learn soldering from me, then I am happy to oblige. I went to a convention in Vegas a few days ago. I was vaccinated. Eric is vaccinated. We went, we said hi, we talked to people. Um, I got some crap for that, but uh, I I did what I was supposed to for pretty much a year and a half. I, If the vaccine, if a, if a vaccine is going to be considered not a solution, even when it's this effective at preventing hospitalization, just because you have 39 hospitalizations from fully vaccinated people under the age of 60, what do you do? I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments. Lewis, you're a vaccine fanboy. You got it and you could still get hospitalized. I know, but the rate is still considerably lower than if you're not. And these numbers, if anything, appear to reinforce that. But you let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.